Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance and in this presentation we'll be covering the acute to chronic workload ratio and how these principles can be applied to athletic training. First, we need to understand what the acute to chronic workload ratio is. Essentially, it is a ratio between how much workload has been done in the last seven days versus the average weekly workload that has been performed over the previous 28 days. So basically, how much workload has been performed in the last week compared to the previous month. For example, let's say an athlete ran 30 kilometers in the last week, and in the previous four weeks, they ran 25, 30, 32, and 27 kilometers respectively. So the average weekly distance ran over those previous four weeks would equal 28.5 kilometers. So the acute workload is 30 kilometers and the chronic workload is 28.5 kilometers. The acute to chronic workload ratio would therefore be 30 to 28.5, giving a value of 1.05. In other words, the athlete did 105% of the workload in the past week than the average of the last four weeks, which is an increase of 5%. Most of the research on the acute to chronic workload ratio has been done in field sports using distance as a measure of workload. However, the same concepts can be applied to other forms of workload in various sports. So for strength training, volume load, number of sets or number of repetitions can be used as a measure of workload. Number of pitches or hits can be used in throwing and hitting sports like baseball or cricket. And swimming sports can also use distance or distance at high speeds. Whatever the sport is, the acute to chronic workload ratio can be used. Although the concept remains the same, the exact ratios used for a particular purpose may be different between sports and needs to be individualized to the team or athlete. So what does the acute to chronic workload ratio actually mean to athletes and coaches? Well, what they have found with research is that when we have spikes in workload, we tend to have an increased risk of injury. That is, when our acute workload is much higher than our average chronic workload, we are more likely to get injured during that period of increased workload. This study was conducted on elite rugby league players, where workload and injury rates were recorded over a season. We can quite clearly see a general trend that as the acute to chronic workload ratio increases, the risk of injury also increases. Whereas if the acute to chronic workload ratio is low, the risk of getting injured is far less. To visually represent this idea, take this made up graph with a workload of two athletes. Athlete A in the blue line has a very smooth and gradual progression of workload over 12 weeks. Athlete B shows the same general trend of increasing workload, although there is more fluctuation week to week. Athlete A will have a fairly low acute to chronic workload ratio throughout the 12 weeks and therefore won't have a very high risk of injury. Athlete B sometimes has a low acute to chronic workload ratio, but also has periods with a very high ratio. For example, at week seven, there is a big spike in workload after the previous four weeks had quite a low workload. Therefore, this athlete is more likely to get injured during this week. So the take home message from the acute to chronic workload ratio is to progress training gradually over time and to ensure that we avoid sudden changes in workload to minimize injury risk. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.